One is my hybrid ponics shooting system. It's not hydroponics, it is hybrid ponics, soil and water. Then I'll show you some growth comparisons of my rain tree seedlings. And third is I'll show you how to germinate these tough seeds of rain tree using a process called sparification. So this is my hybrid ponic setup, the way it is kept on my balcony. The newspaper roll prevents algae growth in the water by blocking sunlight. I will now take out the seedling into this mug of water so that I can then begin cleaning my water container. The thermocol I am taking out is used to block the light coming from the top. The inside walls of the container has a brown residue from the roots, which is easily cleaned using an old paintbrush, weekly once. Now I add two caps of dissolved NPK fertilizer to fresh water and stir. Time to get the rain tree seedling back home. Add some extra water, making sure the water level is a bit below the pot bottom. Soon I will explain the benefit of this hybrid phonic system of growing in soil and water. These are two seedlings growing in bonsai soil mix in a bigger pot. They are just two months older than the one I showed earlier. The holes on the sides are for air pruning and root aeration. This seedling is the exact same age as the one with roots in water. As a test, I melted only 4 holes on the bottom. Plenty of drainage holes instead of just one hole, usually seen in small bonsai pots. This seedling was potted differently as part of my experimentation. The roots have successfully escaped the bottle into cocoa peat. Time to prune the extra roots. Instead of using the older cap on the left having just 4 holes, I am replacing it with a new cap on the right having more holes. Now it's time to clean up the discarded roots and put the cocoa peat back into the pot. seedlings are three and a half months old and were germinated at the same time. What I want to show you is the comparison of the trunk thickness in this fun experiment. The trunk on the right is twice as thick as the one on the left despite the same age and pot size. The amount of soil in both these pots is the same. It is this extra root mass and the fertilizer for it that is responsible for the extra trunk thickness. In my experience, the roots grow faster in water than in soil and a dense root structure absorbs more nutrition and hence the plant grows faster. Now these two seedlings on the left are older by just one month when compared to the one on the right. When I hold them side by side, it is easy to spot the thicker trunk of the seedling on the right. I am surprised that this much volume of soil still has not produced a trunk of this thickness though both were given the similar NPK enriched water at similar frequency. Please note that this is a fun experiment and not a science test. On comparing the trunk thickness of these four and a half months old seedlings, I noticed that the bigger pot on the right produced a thicker trunk than the smaller one on the left. 
that these two seedlings are of the same age, but there is a huge difference in their trunks. The point I am making is that these extra roots absorb extra nutrition and hence result in faster growth. I kept it short by pinching the tops more frequently than the ones in bigger pots. I can periodically cut off these sacrificial roots with scissors and end up with a pot looking like this with no hint of its past history at all. It would appear that a tiny pot has beaten a bigger pot in terms of growth rate and trunk thickness. You might judge the seedlings growth by a tiny pot size but what is missing is the extra story over here and there is no transplant shock if I do it this way. The rain tree seeds do not germinate easily due to a tough waterproof water coating. The pointed end of the seed is where the new root will sprout from. And for these hard seeds to germinate, the waterproof outer shell has to be damaged first through a technique called scarification. One way to do this is to nip the round end of the seed with a nail cutter or plier. You can also scrape it on a rough surface. As seen here, I had already clipped or nipped the outer shell and made it vulnerable to water. Make sure you do this on the round end opposite to the pointed end, else you might easily damage the seed. The pointed end is where the root will come out and germinate from, so scarify the back end. Here is a side by side comparison of the two seeds and a close up view of the scarified seed. I will now soak the scarified seed in water. And this one is not scarified but I am putting this also in water for comparison. I have tried soaking the normal seeds up to a month and there has been no change at all because the water could not penetrate the outer shell of the seed. But this scarified seed will swell up in 24 hours and the outer seed coat will simply break apart and can be scraped away with your nail. And you will see a small root tip coming out from this pointed end. So that is how you germinate a rain tree from seed. If you simply put them in water or soil, it's not going to germinate. The seed coat is totally waterproof. Maybe if you put many seeds, one odd seed might germinate, but scarification is a better way. I read on the internet that the seeds that float are not good for germination. I have not verified this and blindly followed it, but I intend to verify it at a later time. Branching 
will start. So pretty soon I'll have a very dense network of roots here. And my tree should not exceed this height. The seedling will definitely come till this height and then only start giving branch uh, leaves. So that's the minimum. So I'm going to keep it at that size. 